Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms 5. Last time, we finished up the O Tower, at least as much as we could before we hit the point of no return. So today we're going to be starting side quests. So I'm in Harmond, and uh, basically what we're going to be doing today is going back and forth between two people and trying to repair their relationship. Um, also, there's going to be a lot of cutting between these two guys, and I'm probably going to go pretty quick through the dialogue, because for the most part, it's not really all that interesting. It's just kind of throwaway dialogue, um, and all that stuff. And if you really care about it, you know, you could always pause, and that's perfectly fine with me. Um, also, in the epilogue, there's various super bosses, and we'll be taking on one of the super bosses today as well. So this is that guy's son. Um, looks kind of like Rudy from Wild Arms 1. Maybe it's... No, it's not Ashley, because he's the baker, so it's Rudy. So, anyway, we have to go back and forth between these two guys for quite some time. So, I'm just going to, um, end up cutting back between father and son. Oh. Okay. Oh. Really? Oh, so you know that he's here. Hmm. More than likely it's him. Yeah, just forgive him. It'll be fine. Sure. Okay, his mother's most cherished, most cherished keepsake. Well, yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, the silk scarf. Okay. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, really? Huh. Well, hopefully his dad will uh, forgive him now. Uh, yeah, he totally does. Okay. Yeah, we have to enter in all of these um, little things that he tell us, but at least we don't have to do like capital and lowercase. Uh, just doing capital will be fine. So, scarf, where's R? There it is. There we go. Yep. Oh, really? We're still not done? No, not really. Daddy dearest still doesn't like you. Oh, okay. Well, then why don't you go talk to him? Oh, what now? Favorite flower. Okay. Hmm. I don't think so. Oh, uh, yeah. He's still pissed. Okay, so what is it? Oh, small white flower, but you don't remember the name. The lady with the green scarf. Well, let's go talk to her, see if uh, she can shed any clues to this situation here. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was it? Oh, something that reminds you of winter. Hmm. Yeah, he told us that there were white flowers, but maybe the clue that it reminds him of winter will kind of jog his memory. Yeah, what is it? Oh, the snowdrop. Okay, well, let's go tell Dad. Yeah, we got the name of the flower. Yeah, he totally does. Okay. Uh, this seems like a pretty good son who remembers all this stuff. Whenever you're entering the snowdrop, just remember it's one word, not two. No spaces. Yeah, totally. Oh, you didn't even remember it either? Oh, God. You know, if my father was this annoying, I wouldn't really want a relationship with him either. So, yeah, we gotta talk to him yet again. Okay, so what do you want? Tastiest recipe. Okay, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, okay, so what is it? Oh, you don't know. Go ask people around town. Huh. Okay, well, we could do that for you, I guess. It is a lot like cheating, but why can't you go around town and do this your damn self? Oh, everything was perfect, but you like the tuna salad. Well, what about you guys? What do you think? Oh, okay, so shrimp. Huh. Yeah. Mixed or maxed something? Hmm. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with tuna salad. I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do is head on out here and go into the first area and ask the people in that area if uh, they know what the best dish was. Because it seems like apparently nobody in that area had really any clues at all. Uh, they don't have anything to say, but what about you, little girl? Do you remember? Lots of shrimp in it. Hmm. Okay, well, what about you? Okay, a marinade. Huh, so shrimp, marinade maybe? I don't know, let's go talk to the hunter and see. Well, we got a bunch of clues for you, so what is it? Oh, the shrimp marinade. Okay. 
Yeah, more than likely. Well, let's go tell Dad. So, am I finally done playing your stupid game? Okay. Well, he said it was a shrimp marinade. If you do, if, if you put in tuna salad, um, he'll say that that, that that that's what the fat um the fat fisherman liked, not what the uh, best uh, recipe was. So make sure you put in shrimp marinade. Go. Yep, I sure am. Oh, poor guy. Oh. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, what do we get? We get a full revive and a blank medium. Hey, hey, awesome. So let's go tell the boy. Yeah, we fixed all your problems for you. Okay. Well, sounds like a plan. So what do we get? Ooh, we get the mate guy. Uh, let's go check that out real quick, see what it does. Defense plus 50, and Brad's on the cover from Wild Arms 2. So, before we leave this town, because that's it for the side quest, there is one optional boss that we can do here. So let me talk about that just for a minute. First things first, you have to have only the men in your first lineup. Um, so I have Dean, Greg, and Chuck in there, and as for their equipment, make sure that each of them have a hen badge that is of paramount importance that all of them have a hen badge. And for Chuck, just give him stuff that increases his speed, his reflex, and he'll be fine. As for their mediums are concerned, I gave Dean the C medium for healing, Greg still a sky medium, and I gave Chuck the moon medium, because that will actually come in somewhat handy during this battle, shockingly enough. So with all that being said, and notice that Carol's level 1, I'll talk about that a little bit during the battle too. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's open it up and get some nice porn action with boss time! There was an adult magazine boss in Wild Arms 4 as well. So first things first, with Chuck, you want to replace the adult magazines that are on the fire hex and put Chuck over there, and then move Greg into the fire hex as well, and then have him start high blasting the crap out of these guys. There we go. And Greg is going to be pretty much your entirety of your offense. Just have Dean guard, move him out of that fire hex now, and have him guard as well. The reason why I'm having them guard is because um, guarding is the one thing that gives you the most force points. So it's really a good way to get tons of force points, and honestly, that is the like the best thing to do in this battle. If you don't have force points, you're going to be screwed. Okay, so another thing is another reason why I gave Chuck the um, moon medium is because not only does he have a really ton of speed, he also has the lay change ability. And so do these guys. So they change lay points around, but now I can lay, I can change lay points around as well. So that'll come in handy. Okay, so there we go. We have a fire hex right over there. Um, I'm gonna have you, yeah, just keep on healing. Heal up Greg. He really needs, you know, he's the most important one. Uh, let's see. Let's replace. Um, wait, where is it? Oh, down here. So replace you guys so that we have the fire hex now. Awesome. And let's get Greg going down here. Um, you know what? Let's do a widespread high blast on all of them. I know that he's not in the fire hex, but at least it will deal some damage, and it will deal it to all of them, which will come in really handy. Um, let's see. Just to heal yourself. Uh, or no, it's Chuck who needs the healing. There we are. And uh, we're good to go, so continue guarding. Get Greg on inside this fire hex. And... Oh! Chuck, let's show him what real men can do. Sounds like fun. Let's do it. Yeah, get lots of combination attacks again. So again, using a widespreaded high blast on the fire hex will deal tons of damage to these guys. Looks like I only need to do one more, and then I'll be fine. And just guard. Guard. We're fine. Um even if they even if they don't do a late change or something, we should be perfectly fine. And it's always nice to have a C medium user in here. Uh, because whenever somebody gets in critical hit, or, uh, in critical health, then they get an extra turn. Whoa! Like right there. So heal them up real quick. There we are. Um, keep on, I don't know, do another, well, 
you know what, no. Let's, uh, replace. Get them out of that fire hex. There we are. Ooh, and it moved great with them. Awesome! So yeah, a widespread high blast should take them all out. Now, the reason why I have Carol at level 1 is because of this right here. We're gonna get a shit ton of experience for this, and I really wanted to be able to, um, utilize this newly gained experience, um... On, um, on some of my characters, and I was gonna do it on Chuck too, but I figured, you know, I'll just do it here, um, because they have to use Chuck for this battle, and this way I'm able to purchase various costumes and things like that, um, and I'm gonna go back and lower Carol back to level 1 as well before we fight any more bosses also, um, because Carol and Chuck are pretty much gonna be my level bitches, I'm just gonna be stealing levels from them. Uh, constantly. Anyway, from there we get that Maravel badge, and now we can, let's go visit some old friends uh, from Wild Arms 4, starting with Yuli in Gunan. Okay, in Gunan, there's just one person I want to talk to, and that's Yuli right over here. Oh, really? Huh. Oh. Yeah, there was major uh, sibling issues with them in uh, Wild Arms 4. But now we need to go back and revisit some other old friends in Wild Arms 4 in Mirapulse. I made it to Mirapulse. I'm inside the bar up at the top of the uh, town. Anyway, head over here and there's all three of these guys. So let's start with Arno. Oh, the Baskars, huh? Oh, yeah, Raquel is, um, really sick. Uh, sure, we can help her out, yeah. I really like Arno and Raquel. It was Yuli who pissed me off in Wild Arms 4. Oh, uh, well, no problem. Uh, what's that? Okay, so the holy root from this big guitar-playing man. Oh, okay, well, we've... Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, probably Gallows. And, uh, yeah. Huh. Well... We'll do what we can. Last time I saw Gallows, he was in the Memorial Sanctuary, so let's head on over there, see if we can't help these guys out. I'm in Area 2 of the Memorial Sanctuary. Oh, well, where is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, there really aren't any Guardians in Wild Arms 5. They're in all the other Wild Arms, but not really here. Huh. Yeah, there has to be a THIRD WAY! Why not?! Oh, the Crystal Tear, yeah. An Arc Scepter. Huh. So, how do we do that? We have the Crystal Tear, I believe. I think that we have the Arc Scepter as well. I don't know, it's been so long since I got these things. Uh, yeah, totally. Oh, God almighty. Even an NPC dialogue, you have to say it too. Okay, so go talk to Tim in Mithy's Mire. Okay, well, we can do that. And, uh, off we go! Okay, so let's see if he can help us out. Oh, okay. Well, I think that we have all those. Those are all those Wild Arms 2 badges. Okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah, let's do this. Um, why not? Like, why would you even get the option there? It's not like you have to fight a boss or anything after doing this. And it's not like you lose the badges either. Like, you still have the badges. They're not gone. So, I don't know why they give you an option there. Anyway, we gotta take that back to Gallows, but first, we're almost ready to synthesize a Sheriff Star. All in is a punching glove. But I need a Gunstar sign and a Cat's Paw for that. So, let's go ahead and grab this. Grab that. Uh, get my punching glove. And get the second Sheriff Star. Woohoo! Yeah, it's so good. If you don't have what you need, you can always go to the, um... Let's see what I want to do. We'll take King's Crown. You can always go to the, um... What is it? The Black Market and get anything that you don't have. But for the most part, everything I was able to just synthesize using existing equipment that I already had. So, off back to Gallows! Yeah, totally. Did you think that we wouldn't come through for you? Okay. So, the power of the planet is enough to cure one person. Oh, hey, awesome! Get the holy roots! Sweet! 
Yeah, it's a good feeling. Oh. Yeah, well now you're just hanging out in this temple, playing your guitar all the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go give this off to uh, Raquel. Yeah, why not? Use our um, Exodus Orb to show what it does. Basically, it brings you back to the first area of the dungeon, then you still gotta leave. Well, here you are! Oh, great! That's awesome! Huh. Oh, yeah, so I guess you'll survive now. Sweet! You know, it really is nice that they give some closure to Raquel and Arno's storyline from Wild Arms 4 in Wild Arms 5, seeing as, like, they went on a journey to find the cure, but they never actually said that she was cured. But I guess, you know, you find him here in this alternate dimension, and, you know, this is the, 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 um, the continuation and the conclusion of their journey. So I really, really like that. Okay. So, awesome. Let's check out what we got. It's a weapon for Chuck. It's actually his ultimate weapon. It lowers his magic just a little bit, but raises everything else. It's really nice for him. Not that I'll be using Chuck all that much, but, eh, it's there. And next time, let's play Wild Arms 5. We're going to deal with more Wild Arms 4 characters, specifically Kresnik. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.